Hey everyone and welcome to Optica Talks podcast. Today I'm delighted to have with us Giuseppe Martariella, co-founder at Ion. And some uh, some of you may know that Ion has a great expertise in in-app advertising strategies by offering various solutions and maximizing the profit for publishers. That's why in this episode Optica talks about experimental in-app advertising strategies for games. Hi Giuseppe, thank you for being with us. How are you today? Yeah, good, good. Hi, Xenia, how are you? Yeah, pretty excited to have you with us on board. Uh, so before we start, uh, could you tell us more about you, your path in our industry? Uh, what uh, solution, uh, solutions actually Eon has, as you have different directions for publishers and for advertisers? Uh, and maybe you're working currently and developing some interesting projects or new ad formats, experimental ones in the pipeline? Yeah, so hi everyone, this is Giuseppe, so I'm the co-founder at ION. A little bit about myself, as you can hear from my accent and from my name, I'm Italian. Uh, I started my career over 10 years ago in Berlin, which was the capital of startups in, in Europe, and I think it still, it still is. So I worked at Fiber, which was then acquired by Digital Turbine, and then Trademob, which was then acquired by uh, AdQT. Uh, I then moved to Sydney, Australia, and then I started in 2019 ION with my business partners Wow and, and Sanjay. So um, ION is a little bit about a, a bit about more about ION. So it's the leading monetization and advertising uh, platform for brands and agencies to reach their ideal customers across all gaming environments. What that means is that we want to be uh, the default choice by any agency worldwide for their gaming budget. So if they think about search, they will go with Google. If they think about display, they would have their own solution. If they go with gaming, they think about ION. Uh, we work with publishers directly and we offer them both, uh, you know, the traditional uh, standard ad units like uh, rewarded banners, uh, interstitials, but we also have our own in-game SDK for, for in-game ads. Uh, and as I mentioned, you know, we also work with the agencies and brands directly. We offer them an advertising platform to launch their campaigns across all gaming environments, all media channels and all uh, gaming platforms. So when you ask about which project you're, we're mostly focused on, it, it's currently the immersion platform, which is the uh, platform we offer to, to agencies and advertisers. We think that that's, um, that's disruptive and that's where we see our focus being at the moment. And what exactly this platform offers? So it's like an independent platform where you could be connected to or how it works? Yeah, so it's basically an ad, an ad tech platform. So advertisers can log in, it's, it's fully self-serve uh, and then they can run their media budgets across all our games um, for both you know, in-game ads, but also the traditional rewarded, uh, rewarded videos and, and banners. So, we offer them a full funnel approach uh, that goes through, you know, in-game, uh, audio, video, display, uh, all formats, all environments uh, and all media channels. So you have access to all ad formats and you work with all ad formats, as you've mentioned, interstitial, banners, video, audio ads. Uh, and based uh, on your experience and your expertise and some maybe figures that you have, uh, what are the best performing uh, ads for now? And if maybe uh, it is different um, regarding the game uh, game genre, or it's the same? Yeah. So at at Ion, we we categorize all ad formats according to the AAB standard. So we have you know in game, which is you know all, all type of ads that are blended within the gameplay. Then we have around the game, which is the traditional banners, interstitials and rewarded. And then we have away from the game. So we also work with web publishers when the user is outside of the gameplay. Uh, so for mobile, let, let's dive more into mobile gaming, which I think it's, uh, um, is the most relevant for, for this conversation. Uh, you know, it's still very dominated by interstitials, banner and, and rewarded and, and app open. So. Uh, rewarded videos they, they do dominate the category um, in terms of you know monetization tips or which one work best it, it, it really depends on many factors but um, as you mentioned genre is one uh, it's a very important one so 
you know, the more casual, the, the more hyper casual, let's say, uh, the more the publisher tend to have, you know, banners uh, as well, uh, and then interstitials and, and rewarded. But, and then the least casual, so, you know, more arcade type of games or, or less hyper casual, they tend to focus a lot more on in-app purchases as their monetization strategy. So they do use a uh, rewarded video as uh, a lot because that reinforces the use of in-app purchases. Uh, and it's typically also what we have seen the, the most liked ad unit by, by users, by gamers. So um, again, it also depends on the monetization strategy of, of the publisher. We work with publishers that, you know, test, get new games and new apps basically every week. So uh, they're a bit less focused on metrics like user retention. And, and all they care is that is my um, average revenue per daily active user higher than the cost of acquisition? So um, it really depends on, on the monetization strategy. So we work with other publishers that focus a lot more on user retention and, and they focus more on the long term. You know, they have their successful games and they want to retain those users. And then monetization is just, you know, part of, of, that, of that strategy. Um, up, up, yeah, sorry. Sorry. No, sorry to interrupt, just go on. I was mentioning yeah, app, app open ads are also quite uh, popular uh, these days. You know, they, they're basically an interstitial that would show up when the app opens. So, you know, they typically have the best viewability. They are liked by advertisers as well because of those uh, connotations and they're, they're quite effective. Again, you know, they might, um, you know, have an early, cause an early drop off for certain users. So I think with, with everything, uh, monetization, um, monetization managers, they need to work very closely with their user acquisition managers and make sure that the two things go hand in hand. You can't have, you know, very strong monetization team, but then your users drop off very quickly. So you need to always, uh, it's always a balancing act between the two. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've also, uh, also mentioned the uh, in-app advertising, so blended uh, display, audio and video. So, and uh, some argue that now it's the best performing uh, ad format because it's native. So it's not destructive and it's high, it might be highly uh, engaging as you see it somewhere like banner during the car racing, for example. Um, so here I have a question. It's pretty clear why, why it's performing quite well. But as for blended audio, uh, from my experience, I play games in a mute mode. <laughs> so how to um, somehow penetrate into this field with audio when the majority of players are playing in a mute? Yeah, so that, that's, that's a very valid question. So not all players would play mute. So there is, I think, I think it's like about 50%. Um, so uh, what, what typically we see is that you need to also offer a, a reward for the user to, to listen to that in-game rewarded audio. So it's kind of like a new, an entirely new ad format where it's rewarded, it's audio and it's in-game. Um, so that's, that's a good way for, uh, for, for platforms to boost that engagement uh, as well. Um, as you said, you know, in-game is definitely the, the nascent uh, form of, of advertising in, in mobile and, 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 and in general in games. Um, but, you know, it's still, it's still very new. So demand still needs to, to pick up. You know, it's not like you don't just integrate uh, the SDK and then there is, you know, demand straight off the bat. So typically you need to work with the agencies, with, with the advertisers to get specific campaigns for, for, for your publishers. So it is a long-term kind of game and, it, uh, and I don't believe it would work in isolation. So typically, uh, you know, a, a monetization manager needs to review in-game along with uh, traditional uh, ad formats. So it needs to be something that it's tested along the traditional ad formats and not, not quite exclusive. So that's one of the advantages that our platform also offers is that you can run an in band, uh, sorry, an in-game campaign and, you know, a rewarded and a banner on the same game. So offering, you know, a, a full, a full funnel approach 
for for your campaign where you you know you ran the billboard inside the racing game but then you also add you know a rewarded video um after you know the user loses a life or something like that so that you know there is that re-engagement uh within the same game which is very helpful because it, it reinforces the, the the branding message mm -hmm. uh, do you have any successful cases in your portfolio already with this native ad with some of your clients yeah so th there are quite quite many campaigns we're we're running at the moment with both with a full funnel approach so the way we we operate is that full funnel approach um and you know that it, it's it's a very interesting uh, channel for for brands because these days there are three three and a half uh, billion gamers out there so basically almost one in two people uh, play games and 80 percent of internet users play games so it's basically if you have internet access you're gonna play some game at some point uh, so everyone in the world pretty much is is gonna become is gonna have a touch point with with a game so brands do want that do, do look at it as a new venue for them to to reach out to games um so it is quite an important one for uh for for, for brands to to leverage um there are many successful studies in in, in the industry so uh so for instance like a gucci campaign with tennis clash where they they partner up to, to basically uh, brand the whole uniform of tennis players and then also have, you know, um, in-game ads at the same time. So it, it's something, it's a very exciting world and I think things are going to ch change and evolve quite, quite quickly, quite quickly. I think 2023, probably still a transition year, but we're going to see the benefits in, in the long run. Yeah, and you've uh, mentioned some uh, an another question that I would like to ask you about the brands and the integration with brands. It's quite, it's not quite common, but still we see some cases. Uh, Gucci, Louis Vuitton with Le uh, League of Legends. Uh, also, we saw uh, the integration. Is it a new monetization channel, and why are premium brands? starting to look towards uh, the games it's pretty unusual to have such uh, kind of cooperation i would say yes because typically games have been strongly associated with performance campaigns so if you look at you know the traditional rewarded banners you see 80 80 90 percent are performance campaigns or or other games you know doing a cross promotion uh, but again, when 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 I when I look at three and a half billion people playing games, you know, brands cannot overlook that stat. You know, it, it's a clear touch point. Uh, you know, the same user could be watching TV and then, you know, sees an ad from a premium brand, but then goes and play a, a game. So why not also advertise within within the gaming environment? So this is definitely something that will will pick up. Traditionally, has been lower for. For many reasons one is the the fragmentation of the market you know like there are many mobile games all over the world um, and they're typically smaller than the traditional web-based uh, publishers uh, that really rely on, on, on direct brands so you know if i look at the traditional gaming publisher they don't have the expertise or they don't have the sales team to go and sell in each market in the world to, to direct brands so uh, there is a high reliance on, um, on on some ad network or some tech providers that can actually funnel that that direct demand in, into their game. So it's definitely something that will change radically in the in the coming years. Um, and yeah, games do need to look at at way also at the way they build games so that they're more enticing to to brands. And they also need to look at their monetization strategy that entices brand. You know, like stacking. 20 ads is not going to be enticing for for a brand but maybe have a bit more premium spots for uh for branding i think that that will really help uh with the direct uh brand partnerships but there is a pile of games out there in the market the market actually is saturated with the games so how uh can gaming developers make their game uh attractive uh to brands uh so maybe there are some criteria to be compliant with uh, 
uh, as you've mentioned, it's quite difficult to channel directly with the brands. You need some some mediator, but still you have to have a good product for this integration. So maybe uh, you've uh, faced already uh, this challenge and you've helped your clients uh, to liaise somehow with some brands. Yeah, so that, that's a very valid question. You know, there are thousands and thousands of games out there. How can you make your game shine? So it's something you can't, you can't push out the game and then think about the monetization later or, or think about how attractive your game is for, for brands. So it's something that needs to be uh, brought in, in in the inception phase. So you need to think about games and you need to think about ad slots that would be interesting for, for brands. So... Um, that that's, that would be one the, the main tip you know make your game attractive to brands you know creates specific ad slots maybe through an in-game billboard that would be very attractive for for brands the second way would be you know also to uh, leverage data right so uh, developers that they need to work a lot more in terms of understanding their audience we talk with some publishers that they're not really sure you know who, who their audience is and how can they leverage their audience for brands. Um, again, you know, one or two, uh, sorry, half of the people in the world play games. So you need to make sure that, you're all, that you know your audience and then when you sell to an agency, you know, you know which audience you're, you're selling to them. And then uh, another way would be also to partner with ad tech companies that have that expertise in certain markets, right? So there will be some uh, ad networks are very strong, let's say, in the US, or some ad networks are very strong in in Europe, but there might be some that are very strong in, in India or Indonesia, where perhaps 40% of your traffic is. So you should not overlook those countries because typically they have less revenue opportunities. But, you know, if you have a good chunk of your users in those countries, you also need to partner up with uh, networks or with ad tech partners that are strong in that in that region. So always make sure you know your audience and always make sure you, you have the best partners in, in each region. Mm -hmm. And as Ewan, can you help uh, your clients uh, with such integration? Do you have some connections with brands? Yeah, so that, that has been our focus in the, in the past year. So we build, you know, we'll be building our demand team um, and to, to really work with the agencies and the brands directly and onboard them on our uh, immersion platform and then we would connect directly with with the publishers uh, that we work with so that's that's our strategy we think that you know the demand is, is the key for publishers you know when you talk to a publisher the, the first question they ask is okay what's your what's the cpm what's the revenue opportunity what demand do you have what what's unique about you so we think that that direct relationship with the agencies and the brands will be vital in in the coming future so uh, that's that has been our heavy focus to work directly with those agencies with the, with the big media groups you know the uh, we, we signed a deal with um, OMG in, in Hong Kong so uh, having those relationships with with the, with the with the big media uh, media partners and, and agencies is, is, is going to be critical Mm -hmm. And apart uh, from the uh, brand integration, what are other trends you are seeing right now? Yeah, so other trends uh, that are quite important is also the the geos, you know, the geos localization of your of your users. So I think for for monetization managers, it's important to understand that yes, maybe US and Europe account for eighty percent of your revenue, but you know, you might have, you know, 80% of your users coming from APAC regions and or MENA. So how can you leverage that, those users to increase revenue there? So uh, again, work with partners that are strong in those, in those markets. Um, we're also seeing bidding as, you know, a, a quite important trend. So, uh, at, you know, before ION, our expertise was on web so we have, we have a very strong web and programmatic background as, as the founders of ION so we understand that space really well and we saw that web transition to bidding about you know seven eight years ago and, and now that there aren't really waterfalls in, in, in web there are some but mostly to to ad serve direct campaigns 
So I think that that's also going to be quite quite important, uh, an important trend in in um, in gaming, is to move a lot more into into bidding and have that competitive landscape really evolve into the into the bidding side. Mm -hmm. So it's like had a bidding, right? So the one yes, uh, correct, yeah. the bid yeah. that is higher. So okay, that bid will receive this spot. It's pretty clear. Okay, and what are other maybe some tips for uh, monetization departments? Maybe uh, among our listeners, there are some monetization uh, managers. So okay, um, you need just to think. Uh, about uh, brands just to have this strategy about the regions you're strong in just to have this localization of your apps uh, then just to look towards uh, competitive bidding just to put aside the waterfall the old uh, the old kind waterfall what else so the first tip would be to talk to us <laughs> no, i'm joking uh, Besides that would be, as I mentioned, look for unique demand sources, right? So there, there are many partners out there that kind of duplicate the same, the same thing that, that they do, you know, they have all access to the same demand. Uh, it's, it's important to look for unique demand sources, you know, like, you know, look at, for, for instance, specifically about MENA, you know, who, who's strong in MENA, what, what kind of unique demand is going to, is going to, can I add there? So. It's important for um, for monetization managers to understand the uniqueness of each company they work with. At the same time, they, they should also be open to A, B test uh, many partners um, and then try try new things, you know, like uh, we, we obviously we work with both in game and around the game formats. So we we understand the strength and weaknesses of both. Um, so, but we also see that sometimes monetization manager might not be super open to in-game because they've heard from others that, you know, it wasn't bringing the revenue they expected, but it needs to be a long-term game. And sometimes, you know, being on the forefront of a technology can also help your game to be more recognizable, right? So if you, if you're one of the few that have billboards inside the game, first, your users are going to be quite impressed. And second, you're going to bring that premium spot for brands to advertise inside inside your game. So, uh, you know, don't uh, overlook revenue opportunities just because you're looking at, at the short term, but also always have that long term, long term approach um, it, with, with your games. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a lot of insights <laughs> to digest, I guess, uh, after this conversation. Um, I don't have any more questions. So thank you for sharing your expertise, Giuseppe. So for those of you who would like to put your monetization to another level, just contact Giuseppe or some other managers at E.ON. I will share all the contacts. And just to follow aptica.com for new episodes, not to miss a new episode, and just to stay ahead of the market and just to follow all the trends that's going on. Uh, thank you one more time for being with us, for finding uh, the time for this conversation. It has been an honor and pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Senia. It was, it's been great. Thank you very much.